Welcome to this week of our Spike Prime Robotics Camp. This week we're going to be using the color sensor to have our robot follow lines or stop at certain points. We're going to be using the color sensor to help make our robot more autonomous. And what that means is our robot can move on its own without a remote control. And when we make a robot that's autonomous, we know it's going to go where it's supposed to go without any input from a human. Some examples of aut autonomous robots would just be like delivery robots. Um, on college campuses, there are robots that drive around campus delivering food. They've got a little shell that opens up whenever the customer puts in the right code, and they drive around campus on their own. There's starting to be some self-driving cars that follow specific lines that are written on the road in order to know where to go without input from the driver. So we have our driving base, and this is driving base two, which is not the one we're using this week, so I'm actually gonna make a change to it. But I wanna show you how you can go from driving base two right to driving base three pretty quickly. So I'm gonna unplug my distance sensor and just pop that right off. And then I'm also gonna take my arm off. This arm could stay on, but it might be confusing and we're not gonna use it this week. So now I'm back to just my regular driving base and I need to attach my color sensor to this. And so my color sensor just needs to have two Technic connector pieces put on it. And then I will attach it on the underside of one of the arms, like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in the back in F. I'm gonna fold my wire over so that it doesn't get tangled up. And my driving base is ready. For this week, you're going to need a big piece of paper or just regular paper and a black marker, or you could use some colored tape. Painter's tape works great. This red tape works fantastic for using the color sensor, or a piece of paper with some tape. If you haven't built the driving base or need to get your bot set up to look like this one, you can just follow these directions by opening up your Spike Prime app at spike.legoeducation.com, going to build, and we will scroll down to driving base three and I see that I have the driving base here, which I've already built, and we also have our color sensor module, which is as simple as putting a couple Technic pins into your color sensor and plugging it into your bot so that you end up with a robot that looks like this. Here is our table, and I have my driving base three on the table. I'm gonna set it over to the side, and I wanna put a few lines on this paper, some things for our robot to follow. And so the first line that I'm gonna put down is going to be a long red line using this tape. And I'll go ahead and just put that down right there. And then the other line I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw with a marker, a black line. Now, this line should be a little bit thick and it might take you a little while to draw one. And you could go just like that although I feel like that line is too thin and our color sensor doesn't always pick it up, but that would be a good experiment to try is how thin of a line will your color sensor pick up? And I wanna make sure this works out well for us, so that's why I'm making mine just a little bit thicker and taking the time to do that. That looks pretty good, and if it doesn't work, we can always make it thicker. And then I think down here, let's just make a really thin line and we can test that out and see. So now we're ready to go home and start some new code. So we're gonna click on New Project, Word Blocks, and I'm gonna call this Week 9 Color Sensor. And I create it, and it loads. First thing I want to do is I want to activate my Bluetooth so that I can see my sensor on there. So I click the Connect button at the top, which I am not connected right now. Mine is green, it's already updated. I'll press the Bluetooth button on my robot. I hear it beeping and flashing. I find it and push the blue pair button. And so now I'm paired with Bluetooth. I know I'm paired because I see that green check mark at the top. And then I see that I have motor C, D, E, and color sensor F. So when I start making a robot that's going to move, I like to just test to make sure it can move right away, make sure everything's gonna work correctly. 
when we make a robot that drives using two motors for the movement, we use pink movement locks. And when we're using two motors for the movement and the pink movement locks, we always have to set it up by starting with set movement motors, set one motor rotation, and set movement speed. I like to set my movement speed right away so that I'm able to change the speed if something's not working like I expect it to work. I also like to set one motor rotation to the circumference of the tires so that my measurements will be correct. Now, if I run this program, nothing is gonna happen. My robot's not gonna move because I haven't told it to move yet. So let's tell it to move forward two rotations just to make sure that it drives forward. And so there's two rotations into the middle of my paper. Now that we know our robot will drive, that everything is set up correctly, let's start playing with the color sensor. I am looking at the top of my screen where it says color sensor F, and I see right now it's looking at white. That's what that little white dot means underneath it. I'm gonna move my color sensor to the red, and I see it sees the red. I think it's also seeing its reflection from the light fairly well. And you may even try putting out some pieces from your kit, such as this light blue, or some yellow pieces, just to see if it picks up those different colors. So now I've set it on yellow, and I see that changes colors. And let's see that little black line. It does not seem to see it. So let me go to my thicker black line, and it definitely sees that that is black. <clears throat> So we're gonna write a few programs today and make a robot that is able to drive to a line and stop at a specific color, as well as follow a line on its own. So what we will do, we will set our robot at the start of the paper, and we're gonna create two programs. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this move forward for two rotations so that my robot doesn't accidentally move until I'm ready for it to move. And I'm gonna put in two events. I want one to be when the left button, so that would be the button on the left of my power button, is pressed. And I want this program to just start driving until it sees a certain color. So when program starts, we already set up our movement motors, one motor rotation, and the movement speed. When I push the left button, I want my robot to start moving. And I want it to drive until it sees the black line. What do you think you would need to do in order to solve this? I want you to try it on your own. You can push pause. And then if you get stuck or if you get a solution created, then push play and see how I was able to do it. So go ahead and try to make a program that starts moving, and we've given you that spot dot, that code, starts moving, and then stops when the color sensor sees a black line. The way I would do this is I was, you would use a control block, and I would say, wait until, and then I'd go to my blue sensors, and I would find my color sensor, and say when, wait until F, which matches up my color sensor, Wait until F color is black. And then I would tell it to stop moving. I'm also going to add a smiley face to it just so that I know my code is done running. So I'm gonna push play to send it to my bot. Again, nothing should happen because I only have, when program starts, tell it how to move, but not to move. And then I'm gonna push this left button. And we'll see if it sees this small line or if it sees the bigger line. All right, it went right over that thin line and stopped at the bigger line. I know my program is done because the smiley face popped up. Now, I may want to change it to stop when it gets to the red line. So I'm going to change my color, put my robot back, ready to go, and then push play. and it's not gonna move until I push the left button. And it drives until it sees that red line. Now you'll notice it didn't stop at the very front of the red line. It kind of made it all the way through, and that's because my speed is at 
I could make this bot more precise by changing the speed. And I'm gonna change it down to 20% now so that we can see what it's doing as we keep coding. So we'll run it one more time. And I have to push the left button to start it. And now it stops a little faster on the red line. The next thing we want to do is we're gonna add another control because we want this robot to do something different when we push the right button. So when right button is pressed. And I like to lay out my code visually so that when I program starts, I put all that stuff at the top. And then if I'm doing a left button and a right button, I like to lay them out next to each other so I can see what happens on there. <clears throat> so now we're thinking about how to make some code to follow a line. We need our robot to do one thing whenever it sees white and a different thing whenever it sees red. And so the way we'll do this is we'll tell our robot to start moving left until it sees red. And then when it sees red, it's gonna start moving to the right. And as soon as it gets back to white again, it's gonna need to start moving left so that it can stay really close to this line. And so I'll send you a picture of kind of what our robot is doing and how that movement is happening. So in order to code our bot to continually follow this black line, we'll do the black line, we're gonna use something called an if-else loop, nested inside a forever loop. So we are going to go to control and we are going to find this if blank, then else block. So we're using our color sensor. So if the color is black, that would mean our robot is right here. If it's black, we want it to kind of go to the right. And so we'll use a movement block says start moving right 30 and if it's on white so that'd be the else so not black that means we need to, to move the other way left 30 and you could just type in negative 30 to get that left 30 now we want this to run forever so we'll drag a forever control block around it so that if the color is black, it's gonna to turn to the right. If it's white, it's gonna to go to the left. And so we should make a zigzag pattern following this black line. So what I like to do is I like to put my robot next to the line and we're gonna push play, but nothing is going to happen because we haven't pushed the left or the right button. Now our line following is the right button, so we press the right button and it didn't see the line. So we're gonna try that one more time. We want to make sure that it hits the black. So this could mean we need a thicker line, that it is not seeing the line as it runs. So let's add some thickness to this. All right, we should be ready to try it now. So we push play, push our right button. And that line is thick enough now for it to follow the line. When it gets to the end of the line, it is still looking for it. So it'll just start driving in circles because it doesn't see it. It finds the line and will start to follow. And so let's try that one more time by putting our robot behind the line. We'll push play. It finds the line and starts following it. And you'll see that it's making lots of little tiny movements and then it gets to the line and starts driving away. Now, you have this big piece of paper out or other papers around you where you could actually draw this shape in a big circle around your paper and your robot would continue to follow it. You can extend this line out so that it has a little bit more room to follow. We'll try this one more time and then we'll start making some changes to our code. So you'll see lots of small movements as the robot goes. 
gets to the end of the line and it can't find a black line anywhere. And so it just will drive in circles until it finds one to start following. So you can make several lines on your paper. Another thing we could try is we could make these turns more severe. So instead of turning right 30, let's change it up to 75. And instead of left 30, we can change that to negative 75. And then let's see how that changes our program. And so now you'll see your robot is moving a little bit slower, but might move a little bit straighter along the line. And I can see where my line gets thinner. Our robot gets to the end of it, finds it, and is now going to follow the line back the other way because we are making a sharper turn. Gets to the end again, and it should be able to find it and follow it the other way. So now our robot has a path to follow, and it'll go back and forth over and over and over again. If you're using a different color, say red or blue, that's fine. You would just change your color sensor to those colors. So I'm going to change mine to red so it can follow this tape line. And we might make some changes to those later on. Now that you've used the color sensor, my challenge for you is to try to make some lines that are zigzagging or make a circle. Have a great day.